This is the anniversary of the 1992 Dream Team. Now, by the anniversary, this is the gold medal game with the Dream Team. And you may forget, or maybe you're not old enough to remember, you know, the Dream Team you've heard about. But how did we get to the Dream Team? Because you had the best players, you know, I don't know how many of the top 50 players of all time, but you had Jordan, uh, Bird, uh, you had Carl Malone, you had Barkley, Chris Mullen. But if you go back to 1988, um, John Thompson is the head coach. And uh, is this the 88 roster? So the 88 roster had these players on it. This is, this is your Olympic team. They lost to the Russians, I believe, semifinals. Willie Anderson, Stacey Ogman, Bimbo Coles, Jeff Grayer, Ursie Hawkins, Dan Marley, Danny Manning, J.R. Uh, Reed, Mitch Richmond, David Robinson, Charles D. Smith, and Charles Smith, who uh, played under John at Georgetown. That's not a great team. But you would think, and we always thought, well, we could still beat you know, the, the country, anybody in the world. You know, our country can beat anybody. Um, but that wasn't the case. So they ended up losing in the semifinals. The uh, to Russia. Uh, John Thompson said, uh, the players have done everything I've asked of them. I wanted us to be emotional against Australia because I didn't want to go out on a losing note. We made one mistake here, and it was a very big mistake. Um, the choice of players will be criticized. The Olympics are rehashed, uh, as will the system the United States uses to choose its team. It's done on a relatively short notice. The Olympic coach has only three months or so to select 12 compatible players from the collegiate ranks. And they want changes. Personally, I would like more of a chance to compete, John Thompson said, if there was a way for us to play in the European Championships, for instance. But our system doesn't permit us to get involved in competition. I'm also an advocate of professionals playing in the Olympics. Because all of these players, David Robinson was leaving the Naval Academy. I think that might have been his gap year, his service year, before he went to the San Antonio Spurs. John Thompson uh, <coughs> They talked about wanting to get professionals in there to be able to compete. Next April, the International Basketball Federation uh, will vote on opening the Olympics to players from the National Basketball Association. So April of 1989 is when all of this changed. Philosophically, uh, this is Bill Wall, the executive director of U.S. Amateur Basketball Association. Uh, they had a problem with it. They wanted to continue to have amateurs in there. But, you know, all of a sudden, the United States, wait, we're supposed to be the best country for basketball, and we just lost with our uh, college players. Stacey Ogman, Bimbo Coles, Willie Anderson, Jeff Grayer, Hersey Hawkins, Dan Marling. Those are good players, but that's not the best that we could offer. Basketball globally hadn't exploded yet, and we were losing in 1988. All of a sudden, the dream team came about, and they were taking no prisoners. Yeah, Pauline. Do you think professionals... USA professionals in the Olympics was inevitable or that it was a direct response to losing an 88? Oh, a direct response. Yeah, if that team of college players wins, uh, you don't have the dream team. There, there, there's no call for that. It, let's say they win the gold medal game by four points. You know, maybe then you say, hey, globally, some, some countries are catching up to us. But 1980, 84, the United States won, right, Paulie? Yeah, they with Bob Knight. Bob Knight, Michael Jordan was the main player. They yeah. rolled. Yeah. But 88, you had a team that wasn't a great team, and you're asking them in a three-month period to come together and then try to take on these uh, other countries. Now, there are, were countries that had gotten to a point where they were pretty good, competitive, you know, and international players, guys who spent their entire lives playing for their countries. Uh, then you get to 1992, and it didn't matter. Didn't matter who you were putting up against the United States. Yes, Pauline. On I think it's NBA TV. We've all seen there's this documentary about the Dream Team. Mm -hmm. And it's more about, you know, Jordan and late night, you know, card games and uh Barkley and the media. I probably watched that thing seven times. There, there's no more fascinating topic. I know they've done this already, but if they did another bigger documentary in interviewing all the Dream Team members, there's this one game they say in practice, it was Magic Johnson yeah. versus Michael Jordan, yeah. and Magic didn't want to give up his title. And then Michael Jordan schooled Magic's team for about two hours. And as he walked off, he looked at Larry Magic and Michael Jordan goes, boys, there's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> and Larry, Larry goes, there is a new sheriff in town. And they didn't like to give it up. 
they said that that was the most competitive game that they played in during that entire tournament was a practice game because Magic had his team and Michael had his team and uh, both were out to prove that they were the alpha male there. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.